Miss Ellie Halbert had my birth certificate in one hand and a pen in the other. And she sashayed down the corridor of the Aberdeen Hospital and went right into my mama's room. And there she found my mama and my daddy discussing my name. My mama wanted to name me Mary Jane. And my daddy said, Hazel, no child of mine's going to be named Mary. Why, every time I call that little thing, I'll think of that old woman down at Ed Allen's Cafe. It does not matter what you order from her. She looks at you with daggers in her eyes. Now, my daddy wanted to name me Nancy Jane. And my mama said, Walter, no child of mine is going to be named Nancy. And you of all people should know why. Now, Miss Ellie Halbert did not want to get into this tift between my mama and my daddy. And so she handed my mama the birth certificate and said, Hazel, honey, look, it's 5 o'clock. I leave this hospital every day at 5. Now, I have already got Jane Owen on the birth certificate, and I've left a place for the other name you and Mr. Walter decide on, uh, and I'll be back first thing in the morning, and I'll get this, and i just go ahead and sign it. And my mama, still talking to my daddy, signed Hazel H. Owen, and Miss Ellie went out of the room with the birth certificate in her hand and nobody knew how that birth certificate got into the mail. And I was legally named Jane Owen. This was a story my mama told to me all the time. She'd pick me up, put me in the rocking chair and start rocking. Miss Ellie Albert, and she told me that story over and over and over again. And I didn't know why? Until one day, I was outside playing with my two girlfriends from next door and my big sister, and my girlfriend's mama came to the back door and called her girls in. Miriam Camille. That was one little girl. Judith Ann, come home. And then my mama came out on our front porch and called my sister and me in. Linda K. Jane, she was telling me that story because something was wrong with my name. But I didn't know what it was. Now, when I was six years old, I went to the first grade. And I was in Miss Vesta Woods' room. My daddy had been in Miss Vesta Woods' room. My big sister had been in Miss Vesta Woods' room. And now I was in Miss Vesta Woods' room. Every morning, Miss Vesta Woods called the row. Emma Laura Arthur. J.K. Skeeter Baker III. Cyrus York Craig, Lula Mae Griggs, Charlotte Ann Montgomery, Jane Owen. Oh, it was just like a knife in my little heart when I heard all those pretty names and then I heard mine. But you know, one morning when she was calling the row, I figured out what was wrong with my name. Everybody I knew had three names, and I only had two. But I didn't know what I could do about it. Now, one Monday morning, Miss Vesta Woods passed out the big chief writing tablet paper with those dot, dot, dot lines. And right at the top was my name, Jane Owen. Now, everybody in the classroom got a paper with their name on it, too, and Miss Woods said, children, I want you to practice writing your names. I want you to stay right on the lines. 
I want you to make your letters just like I have made them. And I want you to be very careful with your work. And so I started. I wrote, J A. I stayed right on the lines. N E. I made my letters just like Miss Vesta Woods. O W. I was very careful with my work. E N. I was through. So I just leaned over next close to my friend Charlotte Ann. Charlotte Ann, I hear your brother James Gregory got baptized last night. Did he get water up his nose? And now that he's been saved, is he still going to put ice down our panties? And she looked at me and said, Shut up, Jane. I am never going to finish writing Charlotte Ann Montgomery on this piece of paper. That's when I felt it, a hand on my shoulder. Yep, you know who it was. It was Miss Vesta Woods. Jane, if you don't stop this talking child, I'm going to have to put you over there in the corner. <sighs> I didn't want to go to the corner. But the same thing happened on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and by Friday, I knew more about that old corner than I ever wanted to know. Now, Miss Woods lined us up on Friday afternoon to go home, and she got right down on my level, and she said, Jane Owen, if you don't stop this talking in my room, I am going to have to call your daddy. <sighs> I did not want Miss Vesta Woods to call my daddy. He had already told me what he would do to me if any teacher ever called him, but especially Miss Vesta Woods. Now, that night at the supper table, well, my place is right across from my daddy. And every time I'd get a whole lot of food in my mouth and was trying to swallow, I could just imagine the telephone ringing and my mama answering it. Hello? Well, yes, just a minute. Walter, the telephone's for you, and I believe it's Miss Vesta Woods. And all that food in my mouth, it just hung right here in my throat like a great big old vitamin pill does when you can't drink enough water to make it go down. I didn't eat much at all on Saturday. And Sunday, I was pretty hungry when it came around to dinner time. And so I did eat a piece of fried chicken. Sunday afternoon, I was playing in my room and I heard my mama, Jane, you want to go up to Miss Margaret Watkins and visit? I did. I loved to go to Miss Margaret Watkins' house. Mama and I walked the three blocks to her house. She had a black wrought iron fence that went all the way around her yard and house. And there was a little gate, and there was a sidewalk. And the sidewalk ended at a big, white, two-story Victorian house that had a bay window and a big porch across the front. It had eight cane bottom rocking chairs on it. And Miss Margaret was already rocking in one. Now, on one side of the sidewalk was this old black cannon. Miss Margaret told me that that very cannon had been used during the recent unpleasantness between the North and the South. And on the other side of the sidewalk, kind of up close to the house, was the playhouse. It looked just like Miss uh, Margaret Watkins' house. It had a bay window and a little porch. That was the playhouse. It had been built for Miss Margaret's little girls, but they had grown up and moved away. Miss Margaret called, 
Hazel, honey, come on up here now and sit in the rocking chair with me and let's visit. And then she looked at me. Honey, you want to go play in the playhouse? <gasps> yes, ma'am, I do. Well, the door's open. And I ran across that yard and went to the little house. I went up the two steps and I pushed the door open. Oh, I could feel that cool fall night air that had been trapped inside. And I forgot all about Miss Vesta Woods in the first grade. I looked over in the parlor and everything was neat and nice like Miss Margaret wanted it to be. I went down the hall and I peeked in the bedroom and there were all the dolls and stuffed animals on the bed. But I went right on back to the kitchen because in the kitchen there was a little blue china cabinet that was just my height. And I got all the dishes out of it and put it on the little table. It had four chairs around it. There was a pretend oven and a pretend sink. I got all those dolls and stuffed animals and I put them in the little chairs and I had the table all set for them for a tea party. And we had a grand time, but then I realized I'd been there a while and I had to clean up. Mama said, you better leave it like you left, like you, you better leave it just like you found it or you won't get invited back. And so I started putting everything up and I was in the bedroom putting up the last doll and I heard Miss Margaret calling to somebody. See, her house was on the corner at a stop sign was there. And of course, it was real warm and we had no air conditioning in cars then. And Miss Margaret would sit on that porch and she'd call out to people in the car. Good morning, Grace Moore. Are you going downtown to the Liberty Cash? Well, I wanted to hear who she was calling to. So I listened. Oh, she was calling my name, I think. I listened again. She was. She was calling my name, and she had made my name sound so pretty. I ran out of the little house, and I closed the door. And down the steps, I ran right up to Miss Margaret. I threw my arms around her still while she was still sitting in the chair, and I said, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Margaret for making my name sound so pretty. And Mama said, come on, baby girl, we got to get on home. Your daddy will be looking for supper and wondering where we are. And that night, I was sitting at the supper table right across from my daddy. And he said, baby girl, baby girl, you are grinning like a Cheshire cat. Have you got a secret? <laughs> yes, sir. Come on, honey, tell Tell your mama and me what it is. Mm -mm. Not tonight, I'm not. Monday morning came and Miss Festa Wood started calling the roll. Emma, Laura, Arthur, J.K. Skeeter, Baker III, Cyrus York Craig, Lula Mae Griggs, Charlotte Ann Montgomery, and before she could say my name, I raised my hand. Miss Woods, Miss Woods, from now on you may call me Miss Jane Owen. She put her roll book down on her desk and a pencil on top. Jane. Yes, ma'am? Hmm. Miss Jane, would you like for me to put Miss by Jane and Owen in the roll book. Yes, ma'am, I would. And she picked up the roll book and I watched her and her pencil and she wrote Miss right by Jane Owen. And do you know from that day on, I could not wait for Miss Vesta Woods to call the roll especially my name, Miss Jane Owen.